The ENIAC built in 1945 was the first electronic digital computer. It was a massive computer, it used vacuum tubes to perform calculations, and it had 18,000 vacuum tubes. The machine could perform 5,000 auditions per second. For comparison, a modern smartphone is about 100 times faster than the ENIAC. The device that made computers incredibly fast is the transistor. A processor may contain billions of tiny transistors in it. A transistor can be used as a switch or as an amplifier. In this video, I will show you how to use transistor as a switch. So let's begin. Let's say we have a load such as a bulb and a voltage source. To turn the bulb on, connect the bulb with the voltage source using wires like this. This way, current flows and the bulb turns on. To turn the bulb off, you can just cut the wire using a cutter or a scissor. The bulb is off due to open circuit. But joining and cutting the wire to turn a load on or off is not a practical way to control a load. Hence, a switch can be used. The switch can be connected in a circuit like this. It is connected in series with the bulb. Now, the switch can be set to on position or closed position. And also, it can be set to off position or open position. This is the best way to turn a load on or off. But in some situations, the switch needs to be electrically activated rather than hand activated. As an example, a fire detecting sensor gives a voltage signal as fire is detected. The voltmeter shows approximately 0 0.7 volts when the fire is near and 0 volts when it is away. But it does not have a hand to turn on the switch of alarm. That's why it needs an electrically activated switch. This is the simplest equivalent symbol of an electrically activated switch. The switch is normally in open position, but when a signal voltage is applied, the switch gets closed like this. Removing the signal, the switch comes back to the normally open position. So if we connect it in the fire alarm, voltage signal from the sensor can turn the alarm on or off. This way a fire alarm can be made. Relays, transistors are the examples of electrically activated switch. A relay consists of an electromagnet, a spring, and paramagnetic materials like iron. When a signal voltage is applied between the terminals of the electromagnet, a magnetic field is produced like this. The magnetic field pulls the ferromagnetic switch arm activating the switch. When the signal voltage is removed, the arm is released, which deactivates the switch. This way, switch is controlled electrically. Unlike relays which has mechanical parts, a transistor is a solid-state device. A bipolar junction transistor has three terminals, collector, base, and emitter. A transistor is made of semiconducting materials. Rather than focusing on how a transistor works, I will show you how to use it as a switch. The BC547 is a generic NPN type transistor. The NPN transistor symbol shows that the current direction is away from the base and towards the emitter. There also exists PNP transistors which I will talk in a minute. The PNP transistor symbol shows that the current direction is away from emitter and towards the base. The simplest equivalent symbol for a transistor as a switch is this. When a small signal voltage of around 0.7 volts is applied between the base and the emitter terminal of the transistor, the transistor acts as a closed key between collector and emitter. To use it in a circuit, connect a load such as a bulb or an LED or a motor or a resistor at the collector side. Let's use a bulb as a load and provide a DC voltage source to it. 
This way you can control a load by using a signal voltage. This configuration of transistor is called common emitter configuration because the emitter is common to both input and output. This way when a signal voltage is applied between base and emitter, for example from a sensor in a specific project, the transistor acts as a closed switch and allows current to flow through the load. When voltage at the base is removed, the transistor acts as open switch and hence it is off. You may notice that an NPN transistor requires positive voltage at base terminal with respect to the emitter terminal. If you want to use a negative voltage at the base with respect to emitter, a PNP type transistor can be used. It requires negative voltage at base with respect to emitter to act as a closed key. You may also notice that the voltage between base and emitter is always around 0.7 volts when it is on. This is due to the fact that there is a PN junction between base and emitter like a PN junction diode. The voltage versus current graph of a PN junction diode shows that for different values of base current, the forward voltage remains around 0.7 volts. So equivalent symbol for a transistor as a switch can also be drawn like this. Although a relay can drive high current loads, they have low switching speeds. A transistor on the other hand can handle high switching frequencies from a few kilohertz to megahertz depending on the type of transistor being used. That's why it can be used in PWM signal applications, in logic gates, and in many other applications. A transistor has much longer lifespan because it has no moving parts. A transistor can get much smaller in size in comparison to a relay. That's why a processor can fit billions of transistors in it. A transistor consumes very small amount of power. In a transistor circuit, the current flowing through the collector directly depends upon the current flowing through the base to emitter of the transistor. The collector current IC is equal to the base current IB multiplied by a factor beta, which is called current amplification factor or current gain of a BZT. If a transistor has a current gain of 100, a small base current of 10 microampere will be amplified into 10 microampere multiplied by 100, which is 1 milliampere of current in the collector. The equation is valid only if the collector current is below the maximum current the load can take. To use transistor as an off switch, the collector current must equal 0. And for the collector current to be zero, the base current should also equal zero. This is done by removing the signal voltage. And this way the transistor acts as an open circuit or as an off switch. To use transistor as an on switch, we must provide a base current which will produce maximum possible collector current or saturation current. This way, the transistor acts as a closed key which has negligible resistance. To find collector current, you may apply Ohm's law. IC is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Or you can just connect an emitter in series with the load to find the collector current. Now, when it comes to providing base current, you may directly apply 0.7 volt signal at the base to emitter of the transistor. But in most of the times, signal voltage you will be dealing is above 0.7 volts. As an example, if 2 volt is coming from a sensor, you cannot directly apply it at the base to emitter terminal of the transistor. This voltage may destroy the transistor due to overcurrent. So we must connect a resistor in series to limit base current. Let's name the base resistor R subscript P. Also, let's name the signal voltage as V subscript PB and the voltage source as V subscript CC. Now, the most important thing to find is the resistance RB. 
Step 1 is to find the collector current. By using Ohm's law, IC is equal to VCC divided by RC. You can also use an emitter to find the collector current like this. The step 2 is to find the base current. Use this equation which we discussed earlier. Rearrange the equation to find the base current like this. So IB is equal to IC divided by the current gain beta. Finally, the last step is to find the base resistance. RB is equal to VBB minus 0.7 divided by IB. This equation can be derived using Kirchhoff's voltage law. The derivation video will be in the description box below. So by following these three steps, you can calculate the value of base resistance RB in the circuit. The base current can also be provided by the same voltage source that powers the load. This is useful in making logic gates and other circuits. Same equations can be used to find the value of base resistor, but this time base voltage is VCC. Now let's take a practical example of transistor circuit. Here I have an LED and a 9 volt battery. First step is to find current that the LED consumes using an emitter. Using my DMM, I found current of around 12.5 mA. Now using an NPN transistor, I have connected the LED in common emitter configuration. I will use the same 9 volt battery to provide the base current. As I have used this battery before, I have checked the battery voltage using my DMM again. I found voltage of around 7.97 volts. The step 2 is to find base current. IB is equal to collector current IC divided by current gain beta. Here current gain is not a very important factor while designing a switch. So you can safely use low value for beta, something like 10 or 20 for small signal transistors like BC547BZT. This is because we want to heavily saturate the transistor allowing maximum collector current. So IB is equal to IC which is 12.5 mA divided by let's take current gain of 10. We get a base current of 1.25 mA. Now the last step, step 3 is to find base resistor's resistance. RB is equal to PBB minus 0.7 volt divided by IB. The battery voltage we found is 7.97 volt which is PBB and the base current we found was 1.25 milliamps. So the value of base resistance equals 5816 ohms. The closest resistance value I got is 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So by connecting this, I can control the LED. And as you can see, the transistor is acting like a switch.